I've had the Zoe E, C, C, W, or wireless for about a month or even more. I've been really happy with this mouse right up until the official announcement and something in that actually quite ruined my day. We will talk about that later in the video, but the two most important things in this wireless mouse, especially for a lot of people, are going to be how it actually performs, so how the sensor performance is, how the click latency is, and how I feel about the weight. And we are gonna concentrate on those two things, but let's quickly talk about the quality of the mouse first. Click feel is really amazing, like it almost always has been with Zowie mice. The side buttons feel really good, they feel a little bit improved from the C series. The scroll wheel is somewhat feels like the old C-series scroll wheel. I like it quite a lot because it's very tactile. The most feet are pretty much the same. The design is a little bit different, so there are two small feet on the front and one larger feet at the back, so that you can use the charger right here. The shape is also ever so slightly changed from the left and the right front corners. The side ledges actually now go all the way up towards the top of the mouse. This actually helps with two things and one is that there is less side play when you have these two ledges covering the mouse buttons. So basically there is no room for the buttons to move that much. And the second thing is that when you claw grip the mouse and you extend your fingers towards the right corner, sometimes when you click certain shapes or mice, it can happen that you are sort of hitting your ring finger when you click it. So the edge of the button hits your finger. And that can feel quite irritating, but it's now much less likely to happen because of this ledge right here. Let's move on to the performance of the mouse and according to my measurements, the performance is actually quite incredible. The mouse actually has the 3370 sensor, so it's not quite the newest one on the market, but the most important thing in any mouse, any wireless mouse, is going to be the implementation, not the sensor in itself. These Zoe wireless mice will now have a very high-end Nordic MCU. Performance-wise, this model is actually basically the same as Razer uses. So the components are high-end, much more so than, for example, Pulsar, Lamsu, or Extrafy uses at the moment. And with Zoe's implementation, the motion latency is actually incredibly low for a 1000Hz mouse. Believe it or not, there is less than 0.8 million seconds of latency and by my measurements it's even faster than the Logitech G Pro X Superlight. It gets beaten by Razer at 4K but not by much. Sadly there is a huge but with these measurements and I can't with full confidence state these as absolute facts and that is because these SPI timings at frame time transition seems to be completely off. In game this does not mean anything, I can't feel it, but it does screw, maybe screws up my results. Moving on to click latency, which is good but not top tier. I do not know the debound settings that Zowie use, but the click latency is 4.3 milliseconds. And if the low debound setting with Zowie is 2 milliseconds, it would mean that the implementation is actually better than with Pulsar for example. So with 0 or 1 millisecond debound setting, Zowie latency would be 3.3 milliseconds. We also need to remember that these mechanical switches produce double clicks usually at some point in their lifetime. So you might need to raise your debound setting to 4ms for example with the Aria and the X2, which would increase their latency by a lot. Also as expected with the Zowie implementation and the Nordic MCU, there is absolutely no idle delay whatsoever. Overall, I'm happy with these results, but of course, I would love to see a lower click latency. I don't know exactly what Zowie's debounce implementation is, but I know that they can improve the click latency if they want. The battery life on the EC2C has proven to be good. In the six weeks that I've used it for, I've used it daily for eight hours for work, and then on top of that, of course, gaming and testing, and it always lasts more than a week, close to two weeks most of the time. So the battery life is very good, not quite up to par with the Superlight or the Starlight 12, but this is very good. And of course, you also get this wireless receiver slash dock that you can charge the mouse with, and there is little to no reason for you not to use it, as it's, as I said, also a wireless receiver, so the signal strength is much stronger with this one than it is with a standard dongle. And to be honest, signal integrity is really hard to test, but for example, in my apartment, no matter where I go, the ec 2 c wireless will always track quite well. And in theory, this should help you in situations where you have a lot of wireless interference 
for example at land tournaments or such. The weight on the EC2C wireless on my scale is about 77 to 78 grams and it definitely is not that lightweight. But with this shape and the way I claw the mouse it's not really an issue. With the EC2 shape I naturally curl my fingers quite a lot when I grip the mouse and this makes it feel especially with the Zoe grippy coding is that I have quite a lot of control and there is quite a bit of force actually applied with my fingers for the mouse and of course there is still quite a bit of palm contact right here on the back of the mouse to stabilize the mouse when I move it but overall it's very easy for me to lift because of the shape and I don't really feel any issues moving the mouse it doesn't feel heavy in hand for me Obviously, it still will feel heavier than the 60 gram Death Adder V3 Pro or whatever this weighs, I don't exactly remember. But yeah, the Death Adder V3 Pro feels very, very lightweight and it is very lightweight. But at the same time, I feel that this shape actually needs to be lightweight. So I don't have just quite as much control or stability with this mouse if it weighs 75 or 76 grams. Because it's longer, my fingers are more extended and even the back part of the mouse is more rounded, so I can't control it that much with my palm. I think the important question here is that would I want this beauty of a mouse to be a little bit lighter in weight? Of course I would. I mean 65 grams or something with the shape like this would feel awesome. But am I really bothered by the higher weight? I wouldn't say no. In longer sessions, let's say I would play 8 hours straight or something, I would feel more strained by a heavier mouse than I would with a lighter mouse. But I haven't really seen or felt the weight keeping me down in terms of in-game performance or aim. With the wired and the wireless EC2Cs, I can aim extremely well. One thing that I do not enjoy are the feet with slower control pads. So for example, at the moment I'm using the Aqua Control Zero from X-Ray Pad. This is a control pad, but it's a little bit faster than some other control surfaces. So it doesn't feel that heavy with this mouse pad especially. That's just something I prefer. So with these heavier and larger mice, I prefer mouse pads that do not provide too much of static and dynamic friction. As I kind of do get some extra feedback by just moving a heavier mouse on the mouse pad. So I do not need that extra friction from the mouse pad. So the big two things, the weight and the wireless performance of the mouse are good in my opinion. I would be really happy to see the mouse at 65 grams, but I am fine with 77 grams with my grip style. The performance is impressive, especially in terms of motion, if my test results are correct. But let's talk about the last thing, which is price. Before this official announcement, I wasn't told what the price was going to be. I would have been really happy with 130 euros or bucks, but 150 bucks is completely fine for you US folk. To be clear, by fine I mean that this price is not that criminal, and I myself as a Zowie fan would consider buying it at 150 bucks. But at the same time, this price can make it quite hard for me to recommend for just a random user. The thing that I have a huge issue with is the EU pricing, which is 190 euros. In Finland, I can get the Superlight for almost 100 euros cheaper, which is absolutely insane. And the Superlight, of course, has pretty much the same performance and better battery life. This price is pretty much unacceptable for me. Even if my motion latency results are accurate, and even if there is some other improvements with the sensor and the implementations that we do not know of, I still would not pay this much for the mouse. Not with 4000 Hz, not with 3395. It just does not make sense. It is more premium feeling than the Death Adder V3 Pro in my opinion, in terms that it has a better coding, better click feel, in my opinion even better shape. But the Dave also has a very good shape and it beats the Zowie in terms of wireless performance. I think this is my first ever negative review about the Zowie mouse and it's just because of the price. <laughs> I'm disappointed, I don't actually know what Zowie could do or say to make it feel like this mouse is worth 190 euros. Maybe there is some huge performance aspect that I have not thought of, which will completely change my mind, but I doubt that. Have a great day and thanks for watching. If you can get the mouse for that 150 bucks, I think it can be worth it, especially if you are a huge fan of the EC2C. But for us Europeans, it's pretty much a no-go. I love the Zowie EC2C shape, I love pretty much everything about about this mouse, I got it for free and I'm still not gonna use it just to retaliate against the European price. Hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.